and also surgical management in case of if it is a conservative management fails for example if the this medication proton pump inhibitors and also antibiotics if it is fail so have to go for the surgical management so the surgical management usually recommended for the patients with uh, intractable ulcers so that means is a fail to heal so if it is a fail to healing process so we can refer to the surgical procedures so this is going to be after the 12 to 16th weeks of the medical treatments so around 3 months to 4 months if there is no proper like a improvement so there is no healing of the uh, uh, ulcers so can send and also refer for the surgical management in case of surgical management are going to be the vagotomy with or without the pyloroplasty and also next one is the bilroth type 1 and type 2 procedures so these are the two types of the like a surgical management for the peptic ulcers so but these surgical managements are going to be in case of if the ulcers are not healed after the medical management of 3 or 4 months of the medical management so these surgical managements are going to be vagotomy so in the surgical man vagotomy this vagotomy is nothing but the surgical operation in which one or more branch of the vagus now is going to be cut so the vagus now is the vagus now is nothing but 10th cranial now so it's going to be innervated to the this is going to be the uh, is to the stomach so these are going to reduce the rate of the gastric secretions so because of the main problem is going to be increasing the HCL concentration. So if the increasing the HCL concentration, the acid concentration will be increased. So it leads to the damage of the walls of the stomach. So if we cut the, this vagus now, so which is supplies to the stomach, so now the HCL concentration is going to be decreased. If no HCL concentration, so what happens? So the uh, concentration also is going to be less and also it won't affect on the, the walls of the stomach. So that is the main surgical uh, effect of the uh, effect of the uh, vagotomy. So the serving of the vagus now, so decreasing the gastric acid by diminishing the cholinergic stimulations to the parietal cells, so making them less responsive to the gastrin. So the gastrin is going to be less responsive and also maybe done via the open surgical approach or laparoscopy or thoracoscopy. So different type of the surgical procedures. So I have to, I mean the laparoscopic means is open. These are all the surgical procedures or maybe they have to go with the, like a uh, endoscopic also they're going to do, but depends upon the, the, the surgeon decisions. So they're going to do the either the laparoscopic or is a thoracoscopic, is opening the thorax and also they're going to do or laparoscopic they're going to do. So these are the some surgical procedures to control the gastric secretions, HCL, especially the HCL. And also next one is the, the pyloroplasty. So this going to be is going, is a surgical procedures to widen the opening of the lower part of the stomach. So the pylorus is going to be enlarged here. So this pylorus is going to be open and also enlarged. So the stomach content can empty into the small intestine, so which is the duodenum very easily. So if you see here, so this is a normal pylorus, right? So the connection between the, the connection between the stomach and also duodenum. So if you see the sphincters are going to be the less space. So if you open and widen this uh, content, the pile, the pyloroplasty that means enlarging the pyloric sphincters so it the widen the area so it easily pass the this food content easily from the uh, to the intestines that's in a small intestine which is the duodenum so this is going to be the thick mucus area when it thickens the food cannot pass through it so if it is thicken it's not possible so if you open the food pass directly is very easily from the stomach to small intestine so here is going to be is the longitudinal incision made into the pyloris and also transversely sutured close to the enlarge the outlet and also release the muscle. So here is going to be, is a longitudinal insertion is going to be happen here, it's going to done. So here if it is open, so the food particles are going to be entered from the stomach into the duodenum very easily. So in these conditions is going to be releasing the, the HCL concentration is going to be decreased and also helpful to send this the food particles easily from the stomach to the, uh, like a duodenum. So these are the two types of the surgical procedures. The first one is the vagotomy and also with the pyloroplasty. So another one is the, the gastroduodenectomy. So this gastroduodenectomy is a surgical procedure where the new connection between the stomach and also duodenum. Normally is going to be, if you see here, so it's going to be at the, 
So if you see here, so this is the uh, stomach and also duodenum, that is the first part of the small intestine. But here is going to be the removal of the lower portion of the antrum of the stomach. So this portion is going to be removed in the uh, is antrectum. So that means this portion of the stomach is going to be is uh, removed. So which contains the, the cell secretes the gastrin. So as well as the small portion of the duodenum on the pylorus. So the remaining segment is anastomotic with the duodenum. Here, the small part of the, the lower part of the stomach is going to be resect. That means a removed. So why? So because of this area is going to be secreting the gastrin. So if you remove, the gastrin is going to be decreased. So the concentration is also going to be decreased. So automatically, it is going to be connected to the duodenum. So this is called as the, uh, as the Bilroth the type 1 surgical procedures. So if they removed and also if they connected to the jejunum, so it is called as the, the Bilroth is going to be type 2. So it's going to be that it's not going to connect it to the jejunum. So this surgical procedure is called as the, is a Bilroth type 2, this is a surgical procedure. So this is surgical procedure is called as gastroduodenostomy. So ostomy means opening, opening the stomach and also duodenum is going to resect the, these areas. So in the first one is going to be removing the antrum of the stomach. So if this antrum is, is contains the, the gastric secretion cells. So if you remove this one, is the gastric secretion is going to be decreased. So we can control the HCL concentration. So coming to the next one is removal of the distal third of the stomach. So distal third of the stomach is going to be removed antrectomy. And also anastosum is the duodenum and jejunum. So here is going to be because of the remove the gastric producing cells and also antrum, the part of the parietal cells. So these are going to be the Bilroth type one and type two secretions, type two, type two, and type one and type two surgical procedures. So if we remove this antrum, so that we can reduce the HCL concentration, help to reducing the production of the HCL. So these are the, some surgical procedures. So these are going to be helpful to control the, the high, control the high HCL concentration and to reduce the damage of the intestinal mucosa. So these are the, some surgical procedures, surgical management of the peptic ulcers.